I wanted to buy a battle pass. I was like, yeah, add more customization items that are really well made, quality stuff that add value to the game, and I'm willing to pay six dollars. It's just that the battle pass is completely useless. What do you think about not being able to control your own character in real player versus Eddie? Oh, dude, it's... A... I don't know, the biggest L so far from Bandai Namco? That has to be the biggest fuck-up so far. You add something as great as the replay feature, which is, to be honest, the best addition to Tekken in a very long time, I would say. It makes labbing so, so much easier. And then what do you do? If it's a DLC character, you're not allowed to use it. Like, I can understand them not wanting us to use these characters in practice mode. Even though that's debatable, I think. But I, I sort of get it. But when you add this golden nugget of replay feature, and I'm not allowed to even control my own character against Eddie, I'm just like... Not a good look, and who the hell thought that was a good decision anyway? It's almost like they're trying to get shit publicity, in my opinion. It's almost like they're trying. So, to me, a gigantic fuck-up on that one. And that list of fuck-ups with this patch, it's... It's pretty big. Like, it's like how we were gonna get a story mode with Eddie as well, and that didn't come with Eddie, so apparently that's coming in May? Why? I don't know why it's coming a month later. Um, and also, like, the, they introduced the Tekken shop, and then, what, not a week later, it's like, oh, and Battle Pass, Battle Pass, premium $6, and it's like... <laughs> are you trying to get bad publicity? I don't mind the Tekken shop, but why only a week later, Battle Pass, Battle Pass, I'm like... Couldn't you have let the Tekken shop rest for a little bit? And then you introduce the battle pass. And then it's like, again, the battle pass is completely useless as well. I was actually looking forward to like quality items. I wanted to buy a battle pass. I was like, yeah, add more customization items that are really well made. Quality stuff that add value to the game. And I'm willing to pay $6. It's just that the battle pass is completely useless. It unfortunately comes off as a completely soulless cash grab. Because there's no effort put into it whatsoever. When I look at this, it's like... Recycled, redundant, useless, like Tekken 7 items no one wanted to use anyway. And we just copy-pasted, um, and then there's this ball, you know, uh, blender sphere. The thing is, a battle pass, it's optional. It's, it's not mandatory. You don't have to put in six dollars to get this. So, but I still get a sour taste in my mouth because of a jizz. No, because it's so low effort. It just comes off as so soulless to me. It feels like Bananamkar is saying, put zero effort into it. Don't put our artists in there making super slick items for Brian and Kazuya. Put zero effort into it, because our whales, they're gonna buy this shit anyway. That is all I see when I see this battle pass. Them saying, these idiots are gonna buy that shit anyway, so there's no reason to put any resources into it. I, I would have loved to buy a battle pass. But you're going to have to put in some effort, make cool items that add value to the game. In my opinion, we're just ruining all of this goodwill they had when Tekken 8 was released, and at least I felt like, okay, for $80, I got a ton of value out of the game. You know, there was a lot of content, everything felt so polished. So polished. And then they add the Tekken shop later, and the skins. It's like, I, I really, I don't mind the Tekken shop too much. You know, if you want to, you can buy a skin. But then again, with the, with the Kazuya military skin, he's not caked up. He's got tiny ass cheeks. And immediately I'm like, oh god. 
you ripped this from Tekken 6 and you didn't adjust it for Tekken 8. It, it has Tekken 6 Kazuya body proportions. And I'm all about the, that butt, as we all are, right? So I'm like, okay, so you didn't even take the time to swing this asset by your, uh, you know, your artists, your 3D modelers, so they could adjust for Kazuya's Tekken 8 body proportions. It comes off as a little bit lazy. Um, but I, I didn't mind it too much. But then when they, they drop this battle pass and it's completely soulless, to me it's like you ruin the goodwill you had with the game. In my opinion, when you add these low-value garbage things and suddenly you look at Tekken 8 as a package and it's like, it used to look, in my opinion, like a masterpiece, but now you're diluting it with just wasteful garbage. So that, that rubs me the wrong way. The balancing they introduced with this patch that is just uh, terrible. We play less Tekken because Lars is a monkey character. Uh, you're playing Street Fighter, you're not playing Tekken. Uh, they buff... Uh, somehow they managed to buff Azucena. Somehow they, they nerf Kazuya. And uh, I just come, came to the realization that I don't think they're thinking the, these changes through. They're just saying we should be changing this, and then they don't take into consideration why and how they should be altering a move. They just do a change. Because that Azucena while learning 3-2 change, no one who's a Tekken player, in my opinion, could have overseen that and said, Oh, that's great. That's what we do. No one who's actually decent at Tekken would have said that that's a good idea. Because anyone who's competent at this game would say that, Okay, this, this is actually a buff to this attack. It's, it's, now you can't punish it. Um... So in terms of balancing, the patch is really bad as well. And I feel bad for Eddie Gordo because he's released now. And in my opinion, like he's completely overshadowed by all of the crap that came with this patch. Honestly, as soon as I boot up this game and I see Eddie Gordo in the main menu, all I associate it with is a shit stain on Tekken 8. That's all it is to me. And it, it would be a shame if six months from now, hopefully they've made a better game. Because in May, that's the big balance patch, you know, fingers crossed, they do a great job. Uh, but I, I think we're going to look back at this patch and uh, this month, you know, March, April, with like r almost regret or shame. And he will always be tainted by this, I think, which is a shame because we didn't do a bad job with, uh, with Eddie, in my opinion. Uh, I think he's pretty cool. Uh, but what was it you said? Yeah. Uh, add the, the battle pass is shit in terms of current state of Tekken 8. Battle pass is shit. It's a slap in the face. Not being able to go into replay mode, grab an Eddie replay and control my character against him. That is one of the worst decisions I've ever seen. That is almost willfully, in my opinion, um, disrespecting your community or asking them to, uh, I don't know, hate you almost homing throws should go. They have no place uh, to be in this game. It completely breaks certain characters, like King, I don't even have to mention, Dragunov. The gameplay, the counterplay to Dragunov is completely broken by the fact that he has homing throws with 11 startup. It doesn't work. Uh, it just doesn't work. Homing throws need to go. And as I said before, they, they made sure that Eddie's heat smash is steppable. They made sure Dragunov's heat smash is steppable. They have to do this on every single heat smash in the game. Heat smash in the game. Doing heat burst into heat smash, anyone with 9 IQ can do it, and it's way too powerful. The heat burst is way too powerful, and then you do a heat smash with just 40% of your health bar. If you block it, you take a ton of chip, it, it puts them at plus 7 advantage, and uh, you can't step it. There's no counterplay. This, this needs to go. It doesn't belong in the game. Anyone can do it, and it's way too strong. When an attack does that much damage and has that much advantage on block, I should be able to, on a hard read, sidestep you and punish you for it. You should be rewarded with your frames and your damage on a good read on me. You make me respect you with your pressure, and then you place carefully your heat smash. The way it is right now, stupid. And yet again, as I said with homing throws, to shut down sidestepping, we use homing attacks. 
and homing attacks have certain commitment. They're usually high, so you can duck them. They're usually a bit slower, right? So why do we have 12 frame startup, or with King, 10 frame startup homing attacks? I don't know who thought homing froze was a good idea, but it really needs to go. And we know they are going to um, remove, not completely remove a counter it property, but reduce it. My, I, I think on counter it now on froze, you're going to see a tag to break window, 15 frames. Right now it's like 8, 10 frames. It's, you know, you can't break them on reaction. But I think with the nerfed counter it property, that can remain. But the homing has to go. It just has to go. Uh, and then also, uh, I, I also have to touch upon, uh, this is turning into a long video now if I post this on YouTube, but they're coming down hard on the modding community. Uh, I saw yesterday uh, that uh, they're basically dropping a nuclear bomb on uh, TekkenMods.com. I think they had a lawyer send like a <laughs> cease and desist letter. You can't use Tekken logo, you can't use the word Tekken, you can't associate yourself in any way with Tekken. And this is obviously super dumb. And yet again, it's like you're, you're just asking for bad publicity. And it's so unbelievably out of touch. Because in my opinion, how, how are these mods even going to hurt you? You have a community taking their free time to create value for your game that people can use. But all they see is that, oh, we're going to sell less of our costumes. No, you're not. Because uh, the mod is a single player deal. It stays offline. It doesn't go online. If someone uses a waifu Barbie dress mod, the opponent can't see it. Unless the opponent has the same mod installed. And what people want to do is they want to show off their drip and swag. So that's why they'll probably still buy an outfit to use it online to show everyone, hey, my outfit is cool. So I, I don't even see the mods hurting the game. It's just to, to a benefit. It's just, it's, it's so many just gigantic L's over and over and over, just these really stupid decisions where I'm like, is anyone thinking this through at Bandai Namco? It's, it's all, it's, there's been so much with this patch, uh, everything after another, and it just feels like it's almost intentionally trying to ruin the goodwill they've had with Tekken 8. Um, so I don't know, I, I really hope they, they take the criticism to heart and they start changing, you know, or backpedaling on some of these policies. Um, because in my opinion, like, T to me, at least, the one that hurts the most is that unless you buy Eddie, you can't use replay mode against him. If that's going to be the case against every single DLC character, it's like, well, fuck you. You implement such a cool feature and then people don't get to use it unless they pay money for these characters. Um, yeah. uh, but that one just, it, with all of this, and it just baffles me, these decisions, that one the most just makes me go like, who thinks that's a good idea? It's a shame because it's, it's such a great game. It is such a great game. So great. And they could so easily in May fix this. It's so easy. They could fix this. It's just that it almost comes off as intentional fucking it up. Or, or straight up incompetence. The, the, the latest balance changes they did and the patch we got straight up incompetence. The changes to Lars, the changes to Azucena, the changes to Kazuya. Straight up incompetence, I think. <laughs>